And that process isn't just external to the country, it's also internal. So in Britain, energy grabs were grabbing the coal mines of Yorkshire, Wales, and so on. In Spain, you have the energy grab against Victoria with the coal mine, and so on. And you still got energy grabs going on in Spain and elsewhere in Europe, hydro power from one area to another. Nothing new. are inevitable product of one group that has the power to grab. I think we need to put it, our discussion in that perspective. To we'll ask the question, because I think it arises from that inequality of power.
what is actually being grabbed. So here, I think the word energy is not very helpful. I say that because I would distinguish between two, two different forms of energy. And I've worked in English, and then I've worked in Spanish, but energy with a small e and energy with a capital E. Let me explain. Energy with a small e is the sort of energy that is used for everyday needs. It's energy that is used for everyday production that is not for profit. It's energy that is used to ensure that everyone within a community has a right to survival, and that right to survival is men. That is wholly different from energy with a big E that is used primarily to mobilize financial value, to accumulate wealth, to generate profit. The two types of energy are fundamentally opposed. When we ask what is happening, if we simply answer the energy, there we are short, because I will distinguish between two types of energy. La energía con E minúscula y la energía con E mayúscula. La energía con E minúscula se refiere a las necesidades diarias de la, de la población. Es decir, la producción diaria sin ánimo de lucro, sin, sin estándares, sino que responde a, 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 a la necesidad de los miembros de la comunidad de poder disfrutar de ese derecho a la energía. Y en cambio, la energía con E mayúscula es la que se refiere pues, a la movilización del valor financiero, al mercado, los beneficios y a la acumulación. Big E energy is always scarce. You can never ever get enough of it. No matter what you do, you can never get enough energy within a system that is based around accumulation and the generation of profit. Why? Because that very system endlessly creates new demands, endlessly creates consumer desires, it endlessly creates exclusion, and it endlessly creates scarcity. It is driven by the creation of scarcity, not least of energy. You cannot get enough of it. Con mayúscula siempre es insuficiente. Nunca se obtiene suficiente porque se basa en un sistema de acumulación y de creación de beneficio. No para de crear necesidades de consumo, exclusión y mercados. Con lo cual, eh, es, un, es, un, es una necesidad que nunca se ve colmada. By contrast, small e energy mobilizes around a very different set of social priorities. Not least the notion of enoughness. That everyone should have enough to survive, but that no one should have so much that that much jeopardizes the survival of everyone else. The con of minúscula moviliza, se, se mueve en un marco de prioridades muy distintas. Se mueve en un marco donde el, la palabra clave es suficiente, suficiente energía para poder sobrevivir, para poder sobrevivir todo el mundo todos los grupos de población, sin que mmm, hay algunos que tengan tanto que, que no permitan que algunos puedan tener lo suficiente. So, if you're driven by big E energy demand, you're constantly going to be looking for new resources to grab. And of course, you saw it in the film, uh, the European Union is doing exactly that, whether it's new pipelines to the Caspian, draw out oil from the Caspian, new pipelines to Nigeria, to draw out oil from Nigeria, uh, whether it's um, uh, biofuels, you know, land grabs in Africa, 14,000 hectares in Sierra Leone just to, to generate um, palm oil for palm oil production and so on. It's always gonna be looking for new sources of supply for that big E energy. La energía con E mayúscula siempre busca nuevas fuentes para acabar. 
Cada vez solía ser los ministros del Mar Caspio, los ministros de Nigeria, el Banco para Niños de Cuba y Nigeria, el aceite de palma de Sierra Leone, en Sierra Leone, siempre buscan nuevas fuentes. But in the midst day, to think, and I think here's a critique of some of the rhetoric around the Gulf War, the invasion of Iraq. It's a mistake to think that those energy grabs are literally one country grabbing energy for itself. America didn't go into Iraq to grab oil for America, nor did Europe go into Iraq to grab oil for Europe. It went into Iraq to grab oil for the global economic system, the global system of accumulation. Sudan, which is being where the oil is being developed by China, people say China is grabbing the oil for China. Rubbish. The moment it goes to Port Sudan, it goes on to a tanker, and then it goes on to the global market. It could well end up here. So these are the, the energy grab is not a simple thing of as in colonialism, the colonialism of just simply taking over land or taking over oil or taking over gas or whatever for you. This is a grab for global capitalism. Quite literally, global capitalism. Pero sería un error pensar que este acabamiento de energía se produce por parte de un país eh, para sí mismo, para beneficiarse eh, personalmente este país de esta energía que ha acaparado de otro país. Si, por ejemplo, pensamos en la tierra de Dios, pero no sabemos global de acumulación. En Sudán también vemos como China acapara su, su energía, pero no para China solamente, sino también para el mercado global. Quizás también es eh, energía que nos llega aquí a España al final, al final de Europa. De es decir, no es, lo mismo, no es el mismo sistema que el colonialismo, sino que es un sistema que al final lo que alimenta es el capitalismo global. Y global nunca me fue dicho. And energy grabs and land grabs are not just about taking a resource. They're also fundamentally about constructing new forms of accumulation. So, within Europe, the external grab of energy, gas for example, is also absolutely tied to creating internal markets for gas. So it's about constructing new forms of accumulation. In this case, markets for energy, particular forms of energy. El acaparamiento de energía y de tierras no solo trata de de llevarse esos recursos, sino que lo que lo que intentan es construir nuevas formas de acumulación. En Europa, por ejemplo, con el gas, eh, al final importar, acabar ese gas, al final resulta en que con los objetivos eh, es, es complet, está completamente relacionado con crear mercados eh, internos de gas, crear nuevos mercados. So, along with the creation of a market in gas, you also got the privatization of energy supply. And that in itself creates new forms of scarcity because the energy only goes to those who can afford to buy it. And in a global market, a New York cat has more buying a bargaining power than many poorer people even in Europe. So the energy goes to those who have the money. This is about creating new forms of scarcity new forms of accumulation, new forms of, of uh, mobilizing financial value. So, um, the creation, it is about the creation of, I'm oh, sorry, privatizar las fuentes de energía, sobre todo. Y esta privatización de los de las fuentes de energía eh, crean escasez, porque al final eh, lo que pasa es que son, pueden 
tienen herencia los que la pueden pagar. Y, mmm, sí, decía que un gas en Nueva York puede tener más, más energía que un, una, que un europeo, porque al final, ¿no? Si se distribuye de una manera. Es decir, se trata de crear nuevas formas de acumulación. And all this is taking, into, is taking place within a context where financial markets are able, through the production of new financial products, a process known as financialization, to build new forms of capital accumulation on each and every deal. So, in the old days, if I wanted to build a coal power car station, I'd go along to a group of investors and I'd get some equity. I'd go along to a bank and I'd borrow some money. Okay? When I borrowed the money from the bank, it would be a one-to-one -one deal. Today, if I, no, no loan to a bank, to, to, to a company from a bank, is just a, sing, a single deal. That loan will be securitized and packaged up and sold on to other investors. If it's a coal-fired power station, there are other forms of new derivative type um, uh, mechanisms that I can make money on. For example, carbon trading. I can uh, go into the whole process of... Any of the power stations. Power stations. En, en, ya. Bueno, las, las maneras de, 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 de funcionar de la energía han cambiado muchísimo. Antes, pues, para pedir un préstamo en un banco, el trato era uno por uno. Ahora, pues, para hacer cualquier tipo de, de obtener un préstamo, para hacer cualquier tipo de, 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 de reservorio, de, de pantano, de lo que sea, no te dan un préstamo, sino que pasa por toda una serie de procesos donde el préstamo se utilizado, empaquetado, es decir, toda una serie de mecanismos donde se crea mmm, beneficios en el camino ¿no? y todo se convierte en negocio. And the more financialized the whole process comes, the process of actually raising the money for energy projects, the process of, of uh, uh, privatizing and commercializing the distribution, and the sale of, of, of energy, the more opportunities there are for that type of speculative finance. So that if you're an oil company today, probably a fifth of your income simply comes from speculating on oil futures markets, for example. Y la financiación eh, de todo este proceso se obtiene a través de pues, cómo recaudar dinero, cómo se, se privatiza, se comercializa, se distribuyen las energías para crear más finanzas especulativas. En cualquier negocio de día, el 5% de la capital seguramente es, eh, pertenece a, a, a empresas de, de energía de, de, de petróleo. So, what is being grabbed? is not just the resource these days. It's also the endless opportunity to create new financial products and, and create new forms of accumulation. And it is absolutely critical to see energy policy within that context, because it raises a whole mass of new challenges for us in terms of trying to make a transition away from fossil fuels. <coughs> O sea, que lo que se está acaparando es no solo son los recursos, sino la, esa oportunidad de crear nuevas formas de acumulación. Y así es como debemos analizar, desde, desde esta perspectiva debemos analizar las políticas de energía. Y con, también como una transición de los combustibles fósiles. So, when people respond to this by saying, okay, well the answer is, you know, community control of energy, community wind power, community solar power, etc., etc. And that's absolutely right. But the mechanisms by which they raise the money for that will be fundamental to how that energy is used, whether it's big E energy or small E energy. 
And I look around, say, England, where I live, and many community controlled solar panel plants, for example, are actually just feeding straight into the grid. They may be controlled, the money may be, the profits may be being made by the community, but the energy is being used to power big E energy, to power the, the wider system of, of, of capital accumulation. And that is problematic, in my view, to having a transformation away from big E energy to small E energy, away from energy which can never, there can never be enough of, to energy where there is enoughness. And I think that the discussions that groups like Transition Time, movements in South America like We and Vivier, and so on and so forth, are having around the concept of enoughness. If that discussion is separated from the issue, not just the who controls energy, but whether that energy is for profit or for use. <laughs> we will never get out of this crisis. No, absolutely. <laughs> Cuando nos preguntamos por la solución al problema, pues tenemos pues, las respuestas ¿no? pues de, de la comunidad, ¿no? la, 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 la economía de comunidad, la, 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 el, el control comunitario, los parques solares comunitarios, que eso está muy bien. Pero el, lo que tenemos que ver, sobre todo, son los mecanismos con que recaudan su dinero, con que se financian porque los, los, hay muchos parques solares que se financian directamente de las redes eh, tradicionales y claro que dan beneficios a la comunidad, pero eh, tenemos que ser muy cautos en ese aspecto viendo cómo se financian y de lo que se trata aquí es pasar de la E mayúscula a la E minúscula que, que representa el concepto de suficiente, de suficiente energía para todos. Y en estos debates de grupos como Transition Time, pues se están debatiendo sobre todo este concepto de suficiente. Y del debate debería también diferenciar y distinguir si esta energía se destina a beneficios económicos o al uso. Y ahí creo que es lo que nos va a dar la respuesta de si, de si es lo que buscamos o no. Thank you very much for coming.